So we're given a differential equation, dy dx is y squared over x minus 1, and then there are several tasks we're asked to perform. I'm just going to highlight the particular concepts that we're going to need over here on the right, and just jump into this first part A. We're just asked to sketch a slope field for a specific set of points. Now all we have to do here are draw short line segments at each of these indicated points and we make the slope of these line segments whatever dy dx is at that point. So we're just going to plug in x and y values for each of the points and that will help us know what slope to make the line segment at that point. Let's start with the origin. Okay? x is 0, y is 0. So y squared is going to give us a 0 in the numerator, and 0 minus 1 gives us a negative 1. Basically, the slope is 0. So we just draw a line segment whose slope is 0. Now, if you think about it, when x is 2, we're going to get the same result, because even though the denominator changes to 1 instead of negative 1, y is still 0, and squaring it doesn't change that. And so these two segments are easy. OK, let's go ahead and take x equals 0, y equals 1. 1 squared is 1. Uh, 0 minus 1 is negative 1. 1 over negative 1. We're doing a line segment with a slope of negative 1. Here, if you think about it, the denominator will change from negative 1 to positive 1 but the numerator won't change, and so our slope now becomes positive 1. And finally, when y is 2, we're going to get the negative slope here and the positive slope here, but because y squared gives us a 4, this has a slope of negative 4, which I'm approximating like that, and this has a slope of positive 4. Again, it's not all that important to get the slopes perfectly accurate, just so the gist of it. If the slope goes from 0 here up to 1 or negative 1 here, and then a lot steeper, 4 and negative 4 here. Again, it's not part of the test, but you might just note in passing why they didn't ask us to draw the slopes here at 1. And I hope you can see that the problem would be you'd get a 0 in the denominator and 1 in the numerator, which would be indeterminate. And that's part A. All right, so we're on to part B. And the one new piece of information we're given is that f of 2 equals 3. Again, you can just think of this as an xy pair just means 2 comma 3 is a point that is the initial condition for a particular solution of this differential equation. And we're trying to find the equation for the tangent line. And so whenever this comes up, we're just going to write y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, where we put in the x and x1, y1 points, and then we plug in to the derivative equation to find what the slope is at that point. So I'm just going to repeat what I have over here just by saying in general. A tangent line equation is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And so I'm going to just substitute in this case y minus, what were we given for the y? The 3 equals, I'll come back to that m in just a second, x minus, what were we given for x? The 2. So what goes here? The slope. And we just have to plug in 2 comma 3 into this situation. So 3 is the y, 3 squared is 9. 2 minus 1 is 
uh, 1, so we have 9 over 1, and so our slope is 9. Now, they asked for an equation for the tangent line. We're done with that. There is no need to turn it into y equals mx plus b form to get full credit. So just let it be like that. Now, they do ask another question here in part b. They want an approximation for f of 2.1. And so all we do is plug in 2.1 as our x value into this equation and find out what the resulting y is. There's no need to memorize a separate tangent line approximation equation. It's just the same thing, this um, point-slope form for a line. So we're going to write that f of 2.1 is approximately, I'm going to write, move this 3, let's just be clear what we're doing. I'm trying to find what this new y value is when I plug in 2.1 here. So I'm just going to move the 3 over and I'm going to write going to move the 3 over and I'm going to write uh, 9 times 2.1 minus 2 plus 3. And that equals, what is this? This is 0.1. 9 times 0.1 is 0.9 plus 3 equals 3.9. That's it. Now we move to part C, and this is solving the differential equation exactly. So just to be clear, what we've done previously is we found an approximate solution for a particular x value of this equation. Now we want to solve it exactly, and to do that we're going to use the method of separation of variables, namely just to recap, we're going to separate x and dx factors, put them on one side of the equal sign, put the y and dy factors on the other. That allows us to integrate each side separately. We're going to rearrange, using our impressive algebra skills, the equation until we get y by itself. And, and it will involve a, an unknown, a factor c. We'll use the initial condition to figure out what that factor C is. So away we go. We'll start here. We'll just write dy dx equals y squared over x minus 1. OK, we want x and dx factors on one side. I'm just going to say rearranging. I'm going to get dx over x minus 1 equals dy over y squared. I'm going to rewrite this before we integrate as y to the negative 2. And I'm just going to leave this like that. Okay, let's integrate this side. That's easy. Um, it's just the standard exponent form. So this is going to give us y to the negative 1 over negative 1 plus some c equals. Here we have x minus 1, but we can treat it just as if it were x. Um, Technically, we're doing a u substitution where u equals x minus 1, but du and dx come out to the same. And so we're really doing du over u. That's ln of the absolute value of whatever u was. And it was x minus 1 plus some other c. Again, the details are left for the videos that talk about separation of variables, but the key issue is 
the C's are simply a representation of what we don't know. So we can consolidate them together and call them some new C. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply everything through by a negative 1. So now I have y inverse equals negative ln of x minus 1, absolute value. But it's still just plus C because we're again just consolidating what we don't know into this single letter C. All right, now I'm trying to solve for y, right? That's the next step. So y is just uh, 1 over this, so I can write y equals 1 over negative ln of x minus 1 plus c. Now some of you may be tempted to just leave the c in the numerator or separately off to the side. But again, we took the entire reciprocal of this side. That means we've got to take the entire reciprocal of this side. And I should really fix this. This should still say absolute value of x minus 1. Okay, we have solved for y. Now it's time to use the initial condition to figure out uh, the full differential equation or the particular solution to the differential equation. So I'll just do, use a little dividing line here to keep it separate from what we were doing in B. And let's say using initial condition, we know that when x is 1, y is, uh, when x is 2, y is 3. So I'm going to write 3 equals 1 over negative ln of 2 minus 1 plus whatever c is. Okay, what is the ln of 2 minus 1? Well, it's the ln of 1. And the ln of 1 conveniently is uh, 0. The fact that the negative sign is there doesn't change anything. Negative 0 is still the same as 0. And so what we have is 3 equals 1 over c. Therefore, c has to be equal to 1 third. c equals 1 third. And so our final solution, we're going to write y equals 1 over negative ln of x minus 1 plus 1 third. Hope you had as much fun listening as I did making this. Good luck.